Good afternoon, everybody. It is a great honor for me to be in Ghana and to speak to the representatives of the people of Ghana. I am, I am deeply grateful for the welcome that I've received from Michelle and Malia and Sasha Obama. Uh, Ghana's history is rich. The ties between our two countries are strong. And I am proud this is my first visit to Sub-Saharan Africa as President of the United States of America. I want to thank Madam Speaker uh, and all the members of the House of Representatives for hosting us today. I want to thank President Mills for his outstanding leadership uh, to the former president, Jerry Rawlings, former president before the vice president, uh, Justice. Thanks to all of you for your extraordinary hospitality uh, and the wonderful institutions that you've built here in Ghana. And I'm speaking to you at the end of a long trip. I began in Russia for a summit between two great powers. I traveled to Italy for a meeting of the world's leading economies. And I've come here to Ghana for a simple reason. The 21st century will be shaped by what happened not just in Rome or Moscow or Washington, but by what happens in Accra as well. This is the simple truth of a time when the boundaries between people are overwhelmed by our connections. Your prosperity can expand America's prosperity. Your health and security can contribute to the world's health and security. And the strength of your democracy can help advance human rights for people everywhere. So I do not see the countries and peoples of Africa as a world apart. I see Africa as a fundamental part of our connected world, as partners with America on behalf of the future we want for all of our children. That partnership must be grounded in mutual responsibility and mutual respect. And that is what I want to speak with you about today. We must start from the simple premise that Africa's future is up to Africans. I say this knowing full well the tragic past that has sometimes haunted this part of the world. After all, I have the blood of Africa within me. And my family is my family's story encompasses both the tragedies and triumphs of the larger African story. Some of you know my grandfather was a cook for the British in Kenya. And though he was a respected elder in his village, his employers called him boy for much of his life. He was on the periphery of Kenya's liberation struggles, but he was still in prison during repressive times. In his life, colonialism wasn't simply the creation of unnatural borders or fair terms of trade. It was something experienced personally, day after day, year after year. My father grew up herding goats in a tiny village, a possible distance away from the American universities where he would come to get an education. He came of age at a moment of extraordinary promise for Africa. The struggles of his own father's generation were giving birth to new nations, living right here in Ghana. Africans were educating and asserting themselves in new ways, and history was on the move. But despite the progress that has been made, and there, there has been considerable progress in many parts of Africa, we also know that much of that promise has yet to be fulfilled. Countries like Kenya had a per capita economy larger than South Korea's when I was born. They have badly 
been outpaced. Disease and conflict have ravaged parts of the African continent. In many places, the hope of my father's generation gave way to cynicism and despair. Now, it's easy to point fingers and to pin the blame of these problems on others. Yes, a colonial map that makes little sense helped to breed conflict. The West has often approached Africa as a patron or a source of resources rather than a partner. But the West is responsible for the destruction of the Zimbabwean economy over the last decade. Or wars in which children are enlisted as combatants. In my father's life, it was partly tribalism, and patronage, and nepotism in an independent Kenya that for a long stretch derailed his career. And we know that this kind of corruption is still a daily fact of life for far too many. Now, we know that's also not the whole story. Here in Ghana, you show us a face of Africa that is too often overlooked by a world that sees only tragedy or a need for charity. And people of Ghana have worked hard to put democracy on firmer footing with repeated peaceful transfers of power, even in the wake of closely contested elections. And by the way, can I say that for that, the minority deserves as much credit as the majority. And with improved governance and emerging civil society, Ghana's economy has shown impressive growth. This, this progress may lack the drama of 20th century liberation struggles. But make no mistake, it will ultimately be more significant. For just as it is important to emerge from the control of other nations, it is even more important to build one's own nation. So I believe that this moment is just as promising for Ghana and for Africa as the moment when my father came of age and new nations were being born. This is a new moment of great promise. Only this time we've learned that it will not be giants like Nama and Kenyatta who will determine Africa's future. Instead, it will be you, the men and women in Ghana's party the people you represent. It will be young people brimming with talent and energy and hope who can claim the future that so many in previous generations never realized. Now, to realize that promise, we must first recognize the fundamental truth that you have given life to in Ghana. Development depends on governance. That is, that is the ingredient which has been missing in far too many places for far too long. That's the change that can unlock African potential. And that is a responsibility that can only be met by Africans. As for America and the West, our commitment must be measured by more than just the dollars we spend. I've pledged substantial increases in our foreign assistance which is in Africa's interests and America's interests. But the true sign of success is not whether we are a source of perpetual aid that helps people scrape by. It's whether we are partners in building the capacity for transformational change. <laughs> this mutual responsibility must be the foundation of our partnership. And today I will focus on four areas that are critical to the future of Africa and the entire developing world. Democracy, opportunity, health, and the peaceful resolution of conflict. First, we must support strong and sustainable democratic government. 